This is your boy, KQKC Boxing Network, throwing down on another video. Yes, it is this time, Chris Eubanks Jr. That's right. We all remember when Chris Eubanks Jr. said that he is ready. He is ready for Canelo. He is ready for Triple G. He is ready for a Demetrius Andre. And last, and definitely not least, he is ready for Charlo. Now, keep in mind, Chris Eubanks had fallen at 154. And now he's thinking 160. Which he has sparred and pretty much fought at 160 or heavier. He's a strong, strapping young man in his prime. But there's something missing. It's the political side of all of boxing. Remember I told you. Boxing is a sweet science. Boxing is something that you can be proud of. Something that discipline you. But on the other side of boxing. It's a dirty business. And they had business back and forth with Eddie Hearn. Anything you touch. It never turns to gold. Not with Eddie Hearn. Everything you touch. They consider affiliate with Eddie Hearn is always I repeat always tainted now I'm not going to get and hold you long about this video but Chris Eubanks Jr. isn't entirely certain of his next opponent but has guaranteed a far better showing than his last one in front of American viewing audience. See, the second generation boxer barely rev up the entire or engine before the United States. Especially when you making your United States debut. Which came versus uh, uh, Matt Carball. We remember Matt Carball when he fought Jamal Charlo. Now, Jamal Charlo did win that fight, but he did not give his best performance. Some say maybe due to his twin brother, which had the same DNA, was down for the loss. Even though his brother lost and not him, he felt it. He felt his pain. He felt his disappointment. And he felt his belt get fucking snatched. There you go. Now, can he do it all over again? And would he be a better opponent? I say yes. Would it happen? I say no. So, as I move on, the second generation boxer, like I said, barely rev up that engine. Especially when you're new to the United States, as I mentioned. Now, Chris Eubanks Jr. was awarded a dissatisfying second round stoppage win over Cobalt, who is 28 and 3, with 14 KOs. He was unable to continue after suffering multiple tears to his left labrium. Now, he was disappointed that being U.S. debut and also he wanted to make a statement. Remember Chris Eubanks, who's 29 and 2 with 22 KOs, explained on a recent edition of PB Podcast. Ray Flores, you know, the whole shit they're trying to do with the coronavirus, but boxing is back, baby. Boxing is back. Keep in mind, 
first showtime is up they will be putting on fights but this is my opinion I believe that there will be non-title fights keep your mind non-title fights so therefore what Dana White did with the UFC 249 we will talk about that on my show today they made a lot of money but shit didn't go to the fighters it went into their pockets that's why the MMA they take brutal punishment with that so called glove on which ain't nothing but a hard ass fist they take more punishment more broken bones but fighters boxers they are making the millions and the MMA MMA fighters they won't stand up for each other won't nobody stand up to Dana White who used to carry his bags for Floyd Mayweather oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah I told you KQ KC don't lie to you look the shit up look it up now as I said this is will not this will not be a way for Chris Eubanks Jr. not to have opportunities because I already named the opportunities that he have to face now this is the catcher can he face <clears throat> excuse me can he face a Demetrius Andre can he face a Charlo a Triple G Canelo whatever can he face them with his fighting style and I say yes now a smart fighter like Jamal will use his athleticism his fundamentals to probably outsmart and outbeat him I cannot say the same for Canelo why because Canelo is a power puncher he throws nothing but power shots he doesn't have any foot movement nothing that you want to brag about he is your only or let me put it this way he's only a regular fighter with power that's it nothing special why they made him so special because he's supposed to be the next golden boy and financially wise yes but as comparing him to Floyd Mayweather please stop it stop it everybody you can't compare apples with motherfucking oranges see when he come to the conclusion like Floyd has done five different weight classes you know undefeated well you know how it go then you can celebrate then you can talk smack then you have Oscar telling your ass what to do when to do it and how to do it you should have been out on your own long time ago but I get it you're not used to the American market. Over in Mexico, they had you fighting uh, 20 fights a week. That's what they do. How you think his record is damn near 60 something fights? And he only been fighting for not very long. Of course, Mexico. So, one more thing. There are going to be plenty of opportunities. Now, this is Chris Eubanks, and I quote, and I unmotherfucking quote. You know my words. There are going to be plenty of opportunities for me to show off my skills against much bigger names. There will be much more interest in, and says Chris Eubanks Jr., who has won three straight following. A 12-round loss to then super middleweight 
titleist George Grove in the semi-final round of the World Boxing Super Series season. One tournament. Now, Matt Cobol is not a huge name in the sport where people knew him. I have plenty more opportunities to make a big statement. Now, as I get ready to close, Chris Eubanks Jr. would like to make a statement. He would like to make a statement here in the United States. The biggest market in boxing. The biggest market in sports. As I always mention to my live stream, fuck that, fuck that. They created boxing, the UK. But the United States perfected it. You see, we have athleticism. Now, I'm not going to get into what group has this and what group has that. Just keep in mind, fighters like Floyd Mayweather Jr. Fighters like Terrence Crawford. Yes, Terrence Crawford. Fighters like Earl Spence. Fighters like Manny Pacquiao. Now, do you understand me? You, HBO tried to go a different route. They tried to ignore the fighters right here at home. With the best talents. The Charles been out there for years. And still haven't climbed that corporate ladder. You know why? Because they don't want to see them get ahead. They want to see another black champion. I'm sorry. You know me. You know I'm going to call it like it fucking is. So therefore. They want the Charles to play nice. I say fuck that. I say be yourself. I'm myself. One thing about KQ. I'm myself every day. You ch- you, ch- you chime in. Every day. I'm going to give it to you like it should be given to you. Now, as I close, I want to thank all my subscribers. As I mentioned once before, they give you high hopes, high accolades, my chat. They give you high credit before being for being mature for being non nonsense having zero tolerance getting along supporting the channel I could go on and on and like I said the other day where am I chopped liver but I get it and I love it they love your patience they love y'all presence and this is somebody that was in the chat. They said, oh, they are fun. Okay, motherfucker. Am I fun? Anyway, shout out to everyone. And I will see you today at 1 o'clock. I had to take a break this weekend or I was going to be burnt out. Okay. Because seven days a week, that is, that's not easy. Okay. It's not easy to repair to talk every day it's hard but it can be done and more will be done when I call fights so with that shout out to the almighty LDBC shout out to all my subscribers y'all go ahead with y'all bad asses and I have a special announcement today at 1 o'clock With that, that's all I have. Peace and damn love. I'm out of here.